Hello, I'm Tim Gray, and today I'm going to talk to you about presets in Lightroom Classic CC, a divisive subject for sure. Presets, in many cases, can be a great starting point for a photo. Before you dive into the adjustments in the develop module in Lightroom, you could start off with a preset. But I hear a lot of photographers saying that they don't want every photo to look the same, so they don't use presets. And yet, I'll bet you'll find that there are many adjustments that you tend to apply in a somewhat similar way to many photos. And so there are many great reasons to use presets as a starting point, especially if you want to sort of define your own style for your photos. In many cases, you might have a portfolio of photos, maybe lots of images you share to Instagram that you want to have a cohesive theme for, a similar look. And a preset can be a great way to achieve that or at least to get a good starting point for those images. So let's take a look at presets. First off, Lightroom comes with a variety of presets already included right from the start. And of course, you could buy a variety of other presets from different sources. And perhaps more importantly, as we'll see in a moment, you can create your own presets as well. And so if we take a look at some of the black and white presets, for example, here's a black and white landscape preset, a high contrast preset, and a variety of other options. And so I could just mouse over each of the individual presets and get a preview of what it will look like for the image and decide if one of those presets represents a good place to start. But what I like to do in most cases is to actually jump right over to the right panel in the develop module in order to adjust the image in the way that I feel looks best for my photos. And then when I have a set of adjustments that I like for a photo, very often I think that those adjustments would also work well for another image. Again, either as a starting point or as a finishing point so that the images, various images will have a similar look. So here, for example, I have a couple of photos. I like to photograph rustic scenes, especially these were captured out in the Palouse region of Eastern Washington State. So an abandoned farmhouse and an old abandoned barn. And so I'd like to give these images a little bit of a rustic look. And so I could go through and apply a variety of adjustments. I'll start off by converting the image, for example, to black and white, maybe increase the clarity value a bit to really get that detail to pop. I might add a little bit of contrast, maybe just tone down the shadows a little bit and otherwise apply a variety of adjustments. I also like to include a lens correction as part of this. So I'll go to the lens corrections section and on the profile tab, I'll turn on both the remove chromatic aberration checkbox as well as the profile corrections option. I can then use the auto option here to populate the configuration, in this case, a Canon lens, and you can see that the adjustment is applied automatically to the image. I might also perhaps apply a little bit of a split toning maybe just a single color to get something of a sepia tone type of effect. Maybe right about there looks pretty good. I can even shift that balance so that I'm only using that highlight color rather than both a highlight and a shadow color. And finally, I think I'll go into the effects here and I will reduce the value for amount. That'll give me a darkening effect and then feather it a bit just to get a little bit of a darkening vignette around the edges of the image. Obviously here, this is just one example using the image that I'm working with here, this rustic scene. But the idea is that I can go through an image and apply the various adjustments that I think work well for that photo. And then if I feel that that could be a good starting point for another image, it's a perfect opportunity to create a preset. So over on the left panel here in the develop module, I'll go to the right of the presets heading and click on the plus button. That will bring up a pop-up and I'm going to choose the create preset option. And the first thing I wanna do is give this preset a name. And in general, I'm going to be selecting presets based on the name, so it's important to be descriptive so that you'll know what this preset does. So I'll just call this rustic sepia since this is my rustic sepia effect. I can then choose which group or folder I want to put the preset into. You can see that I've already created my own Tim Gray presets folder here. There's a couple of other groups I've created here as well. I could also create a new group for this preset, but in this case, I'll just use that Tim Gray presets group. And then I can choose which specific adjustments I want to include as part of this preset. In theory, I could include all of these adjustments. But in general, I usually like to create presets that only include the specific adjustments that I intend to apply to other photos. 
So for example, I'm not going to use the auto settings. That would apply the basic adjustments automatically to each individual photo. I'll leave that out. I will, however, enable the auto black and white mix adjustment. That just fine tunes the balance of the individual colors, their contribution to the final black and white interpretation of the photo. I definitely want to include treatment and profile, but most of these other adjustments I don't need. So actually I could start off a little more easily by clicking the check all or check none button. In this case, check none so that I'm disabling all of these various adjustments. And then I can turn on only the specific options that I actually want to include in the preset. So I'll turn on that auto black and white option again. I will turn on the treatment and profile. That's what enables the black and white as opposed to color interpretation of the photo. I'll include the basic tone adjustments since I did refine those a little bit, clarity, and then I also want to include the split toning as well as lens corrections. So again, only the actual adjustments that I applied and that I want to apply to future images when I make use of this preset. So having configured the preset, I can just click the create button down at the bottom right corner and now I can use this preset to apply to other images. In fact, I could even apply a preset to all images as they're being imported into my Lightroom catalog. Or later, when I'm looking at another image, such as this photo, and I think this photo could also benefit from the same preset I had created previously, I can go locate that preset. So I'll go to the Tim Gray Presets group, and within that group, I can find my Rustic Sepia preset that I created with a different image, and then with one click, I can apply the exact same settings to another image. So whether it's more workflow efficiency, applying a variety of basic adjustments to most or even all of your images, or creating a similar creative look that provides a good starting point for your images, presets in Lightroom can be tremendously helpful.